Hi guys, so this is known as Selsker Abbey and it's right in the middle of Wexford town and uh, I was lucky enough to get the key to come in here because it is actually normally closed. They did do uh, tours but with Covid and all it's, it's completely stopped but we've loads of tombs and I hope I'll be able to to read some of them. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? We've 1849 here anyway and it's James and he was 36 when he died and here in memory of George Lumsden, 13th of January 1841, he was 47. And Elizabeth, his daughter, who died October the 9th, 1842, and she was only 22. And his wife then died um, June the 27th, 1875. And her name was Jane. But uh, I want to show you this as well. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I've actually born and reared in Wexford and I have never ever been in here and today is the day that I finally get in and sorry now bring you along with me So we're right in the heart of Wexford. And there is a number of, of graves. But I want to see if I can find any that I can read easily. Look at that. Isn't that just brilliant? I'm just over the, the wall there in Wexford town. Unfortunately nothing to read there. Um, there is, a, is it Elizabeth there? Oh, there's 1835 down at the bottom. Quite hard to read. Johanna Maria Hayes, 1982. And Joseph Hayes, Hayes, sorry, in eighteen ninety four, I think it is. And he was forty. So I'm quite lucky that they gave me the key. I had returned the key that I used to see the old graveyards in Wexford. And asked them, is it possible? And they kind of gave it to me. So, Mrs. Frances Roberts, uh, affectionate and beloved and deeply lamented wife of John Roberts, Esquire, age 63. Her pure and gentle spirit resigned its earth tabernacle for an house, for a an house not made with hands eternal in the heavens on the second day. And I love that, the way they have wrote it. The second day of January 1830 and of John Roberts Esquire, the affectionate husband of the above who departed his life to 23rd day of March 1834, age 70. And there's an Alicia Waddy, sister of Francis there as well, 
1839. We have a lovely design on this one, but I can't read any of the writing on it. We have an 1833 here. Uh, Master Charles Sharp, late of Anglesey Street, Dublin, who died in Wexford on the 12th of November 1833, aged just 11 years. So, a very young child. And we have Robert Renwick, MD, who departed his life. 10th of June 1846, age 55, and his daughter Isabel, 13th of October 1833, and the body of his niece Margaret Hatchell died October 1833. And this would have been a fine monument in its day but it's missing its top and there's no writing there at all and this tomb can't be read nor this and this one is is shattered I do see Wexford Esquire here and the date is gone unfortunately I come to this one then this is William Gaddard who died May 18th 1861 aged 19 years and four months I know whom I have believed. And look at this. That's deadly. And only daughter of something sparrow. But I can't, um, aged 11 years. And I think it's Sparrow Esquire, Sally. Bill Wexford, 1881. And look at the rails. I'm just going to go up here. Let's see if there's anything on the other side now. There's nothing. Look at that. And the design's all on us. Beautiful. And the rail is falling apart. Now, just to be careful where I'm walking. I'm going to have a look if there's something on the wall here. In memory of Thomas who died November 1875, aged 45, and his wife, Harriet Hatchett Lee, Hatchwell Lee, Nee Wilson, died October the 4th, 1862. There's some more up here. These are proven quite difficult to to read but you can see the abbey is it's huge and almost like a a castle at the end of it and then we've those amazing arch ways there as well In memory of Anne, eldest daughter of Lieutenant Marsh. Um, I'm 
Ninth Royal uh, something battalion I think it is who died the 29th of January 1832 aged 39 blessed are the dead which die in the Lord so it's royal anyway and that looks like a VET and it's abbreviated battalion and Lieutenant Marsh Mrs. Dorcas Catron. Um, looks like 1833. A woman in perf in a woman perfect in every. No. As a daughter, sister, wife, and mother with talents and then it's, she combined all the above and gracious and it's just too hard to read it all there's 1846 there but there's other names there as well Thomas Darcy became a founding father of L.A.N. and was assassinated in something on April the 7th, 1868, aged, looks like 47 years. I'll have to see if I can find anything on Thomas Darcy. Now I've just had another look and if I turn my phone slightly slanted it says Thomas Darcy McGee became a founding far father of Canada and was assassinated in Ottawa on April the 7th 1868 I think it is aged 47 and you can see Canada quite clearly there and then there's other names there. There's a James McGee. And it looks like a Lauren. A Bessie. And so on. But that's quite interesting. So we've other tombs here. And we have a nice one. Just in the background there. I'll come to that now in a second. I can see John Haddon. Haddon, the son of the aforesaid John Evans, 1878. Beneath this stone are interred the remains of John John Evans and looks like Ellen Haddon, children of Mr. John E. Haddon, who all died under the age of three months. That's very sad. Also, the aforesaid. John Evans Haddon, aged it looks like 52, 1862. Also David Boxwell, we have the Boxwells again. Boxwell Haddon of the aforesaid John Evans and fourth son of John Haddon Haddon. 1873 it looks like aged, is it eight months and four days? And then it says underneath also John Haddon Haddon um, of the aforesaid John Evans Haddon 1878 aged 86 so it's hard to read because I can't get in behind the railing but I'll have a, a closer look around the other edge if I can get around safely Ouch. And you might be able to if I get my phone in. It's all wrote right there. And you can see the Boxwell. David Boxwell. And John Haddon 
Haddon. So that's quite interesting, the double barrel surname. And the next one beside it looks like George Haddon. He was 53, the son of John E. Haddon. And actually, look at I can sort of fit my camera in with Francis Jane, widow of the above, George Haddon. Died 1911. And George Haddon himself, 1852. And there's a 33 year old, that would be George Haddon, 1858. And it has nice designs around it there. And that's the tomb there. So, Haddon. So I'll just come to this one now and see if I can read. And unfortunately I can't get at this side because they've recently cut something and left it all there. Let me see if I can get around. Remains of... Let's see, is it Henry? Henry, son of Reverend James White. 1846. The rest is too hard to to read there. Look at that. And the rails around it as well. There's another railed one here after losing its the top. And way too hard to read. But it would have been something at the top. And this one has nice has a nice headstone. Eighteen seventy something there. Uh, no, it's too hard to read. Maybe an edit I'll see it. Um, something by his sorrowing mother. It looks like. But I wonder. Was there something on top of that there as well? We have another tomb here. Eighteen twenty, age twenty six, Robert Norris. Thirty to November eighteen twenty. In memory of Frances Hoare, she was 47 when she died in 1864, and her loving husband is there as well. He was a loving husband, fond father, generous friend, an independent Irish man and a good Roman Catholic. His death was deeply regretted by all who knew him. His father, Edward Hoare, is also interred here, also his brother John and sister Alicia. Her husband Michael, French, and their son Francis. So I'm just going to go down closer to the um, the abbey, just to have a look. There's gates there, but they are locked, so I won't be able to make my way in, unfortunately. So the abbey is taught to date. Um, from the 11, 1100s and of the 130 or so memorials within the grounds of Selzgar Abbey just 11 predate the construction of the modern Church of Ireland in um, 1818 so this plaque is from 1622 and it's in the memory of the Stafford family it's unfortunately it's very hard to read now and even though I was extremely lucky to get in to the ground itself I'm not actually able to get in inside there but we have another that looks like coat of arms or something 
and this on the wall as well. Which is very interesting. So any more information I find, I'll pop it up for you as, as always. And anything I find in edits that I wasn't able to read or I read incorrectly, I'll try and correct it in edits as well. It's not always easy when you're standing in front of them to, to read what's wrote in front of you. But then in edit, sometimes it's much easier. We have James Vickery. And it's 1895 it looks like. And there's James Michael there as well. And there's an 1897. Widow of John Duggan. Formerly of Mullins Scorty, County Fermanagh. 1897 or 79th year. And there's lovely, I think there are lilies on the top of it there. And then this that I showed you already, this kind of dates. Um, maybe the 11th century, 12th century. Look at that. And we've seen those before on my channel as well. George Windrus, 1886-78, he walked with God. Francis' beloved wife, 1892, she was 74, forever with the Lord and forever together. Um, the Reverend John Higgins, Methodist minister, 1869, he was just 20. In loving memory of James Henry Higgins. He was the son of a reverend. So this place obviously oozes history. Look at that for a tree. And we often wonder what stories um, the walls would tell you. If they could talk. And that is like stairs leading up to the, the castle part. And as I said, I can't get in there, but I'd love to have. And I wonder, is there any headstones in there? Sacred to the memory of Lucin Lucia or Lucina, beloved wife of Reuben Maine, officer of inland revenue, who departed the life this life twentieth of September eighteen sixty five, aged fifty three. And we have a verse there. And we have a John Evoy. Nineteen oh one, he was just 18 years old and that would have had some sort of headstone out of the top of it and we have John Anglin 15th of January 1846 and also his two sisters Sarah Stevenson 
she died in 1879 and Mary 1886 and those tombs are unfortunately too hard to read and falling apart we have another headstone there after toppling over and you can see the rails there of those tombs we have another one here Robert Williams 1865 just 11 years old and his father E.V. or E.Y. Williams um, 1881 and he was just 58 David G and 1880 it looks like there and his beloved daughter Isabella and she was only 28 she died in 1883 it looks like so guys that's all from Salskarabi and I'm grateful that we were able to get the the key but for now take care and God bless.